Hello and thank you for buying Henson's Flying Machine Skyhopper. This kit comes on four sheets of laser cut lightweight ply. To assemble it you will need the parts numbering sheet which will allow you to stencil on the numbers of each part. You will need a sharp craft knife or scalpel, super glue or balsa cement and ideally anything which has a 90 degree edge on it to help with alignment. When you come to covering you'll also need PVA glue and scissors for the stickers. Begin by labelling each of the parts on the sheet with the corresponding number on the parts list. Once you have it all numbered out, you want to start removing the parts in the order you're going to want to use them. By removing the parts to the sharp edge of a knife, Press into the tabs holding the wood in place and then carefully lift out each section. Don't be afraid to trim slightly or sand at any rough edges. The first parts to start with are parts 1A and B, the two sides of the fuselage. These should come out and as you can see they will flex very slightly in the direction you need to bend the fuselage together. Once you have them cut out, just carefully trim off any little tab edges. You can do this with your knife or even with a little bit of sandpaper or a nail file. Lay those aside and look on for the neck parts. The first part to fit is part 2A, which is at the front of the cockpit here and fits into the tab on the lower end of there. Just dry fit it, check that it's up flush. Now, Use any 90 degree edge included in the kit to get that first fit perfectly right. Now that first fit's going to act as a guide, so glue it all along the bottom where it comes into contact with the main fuselage. And allow it to dry perfectly. Make sure you don't dry your 90 degree to it. Just make sure you're happy with it. The next part of fit is part 3A, which is this little motor cutout that slots forward of there into the nose there and butts up against it. Now, just align it again at 90 degrees, this time upwards. If you're happy with it, glue to the fuselage side 1A and to 2A where it comes into contact there. That will guarantee you that perfect 90 degree on both of the sections fitting together nicely. If you need to double check, don't be afraid to. As these tab ends will fit into the tab ends on part 1B, the other side of the fuselage. Once that part is in place, you'll move on to the nose section, which is part 4A, which fits just into those front tabs there. Now, 4A doesn't quite come into contact with that lower part there, that's to give you a little more wiggle room. Now, tack that in with a little bit of glue into the slot in the nose. Like so. And again, use a 90 degree to keep it positioned as you want. Allow it to drive properly before moving on. The next part you want to fit is part 5A, which forms the cross section of the rear cockpit. Fit that, as you'll see here, the tab is slightly off center. You want to have it fit slightly further to the back, like so. Place it in so that it clears this rear slot here. Use your 90 degree again to align, and then glue where the cross section meets the wood. And that's going to form a guide between the two cross sections of the fuselage which hold the wings and tail in place. So let it glue thoroughly before moving on. Again, double check and double check that it is at 90 degrees. Once you have that in place, you need part 6A which is the vertical wing support and cross section for the fuselage which fits into this top slab here. Should slot in dead easy and butt up against part 5A. Now, 
as you'll see, part 5A will guide it on its way through the fuselage and through the tap. Make sure it's well down in that tap there and glue where it meets the wood and part 5A. Allow that to dry thoroughly before moving on because the tap does protrude. You don't want it to shift. Step is to fit part 7A, which is the rear of the cockpit. Make sure that it fits into the tab at the bottom and butts up against part 5A. It should just slightly touch the back window there and where the slot for the wing trailing edge is should be up firm. Then do a long running edge and do it also to cross beam part there. Allow that to dry before moving on. The next major stage is to fit part 1B, the opposite side of the fuselage. Now this is quite easy. Use the piece that's already fitted as a guide. The tab holes should guide you through. Just gently press them in. Just manipulate the wood until it fits perfectly into place. Flush should form quite a strong fuselage shell. Then glue along the insides where the wood meets the cross sections. We're quite a strong bond here if you're going to be throwing the aircraft. Then also glue into the tab holes here. Now if for any reason whatsoever the tabs do protrude through the holes, uh, feel free to sand them back with a nail pile or a little bit of sanding paper. Or you can even fill them with a little bit of sanded wood powder mixed with PVA glue if you want a very smooth finish. Right. Is the main fuselage complete? Let that dry before we move on to any other sections. Laying the semi completed fuselage section aside for now, the first of the alternative choice sections comes into play, which are parts A and B, the tail sections. Now, for a slightly older, more fuller tail design, use part A, which will lead on to a different set of trailing edges and then for a slightly more modern assessment look use part B. In this case I'm going to go with part A for the look and a slightly fuller tail. So start with part A, 8A, then part 9A which is the support section and 10A which is the upright for the tail. Start by slotting part 8A into the section of 10A, as you can see, it will be very loose. Then, carefully, the triangular section of part 9A goes underneath the tail straight and will slot in firmly to hold it in place, coming back all the way there. Just check all of the alignment all the way around. When you're absolutely happy with it. Check the 90 degree vertical as well, which should be spot on. If it's not, just hold it in place when you glue it. And then put the glue between parts 8A and 10A, the upright, and underneath to hold all of those sections together. Make sure to get both sides. And let that dry for a moment. With the tail section strongly glued together, take the rear of the fuselage and taper it between two fingers. Now, as wood is a natural material, some sheets will be more flexible than others, as you can see here. So, you will have to guide the wood and force it to confirm to where you want it to go. Slot part 8A and the assemblage in to the slots on the fuselage, and then using the guide on the knee. Bend these in until you're happy with them. Now you want to get them 
fairly parallel. We just eyeball the fuselage until you're confident that it's straight. Once you are, leave these. They will feel like they're under some pressure. Careful not to snap them. Allow one side to glue fully and still holding it. Glue the top edges as well in place. Now allow that to dry fully before you release it. Leaving the fuselage aside for now, moving on to the wing sections. Wing sections come in two parts which fit together very easily with these tabs here. The front edge is part 12A or B depending on which wing and the trailing edge is part 11A or B depending on each wing. And the trailing edge comes complete with the aileron which can be cut out. However, if you're just doing a display model or a free flight model, leave it in place and just glue along the edges so that it stays fixed. And to begin building it, put part 11A into 12A using the tabs like so, and just glue let the tabs meet and along a little divide. Also fixing your aileron in place if you desire. Now the rest of the wing section is made up of these wing profiles marked on the sheets. Start with the wing profiles, the more curved edge towards the front, and when you place them in there is always a little bit of backwards and forwards movement to the nature of laser cutting. So you need to align it all towards the front edge. So as you put it in, just push it forward and start from the outer edge where it butts up flush against that wing surface. Do a little bit at the front there, at the back, and where it meets the wood all the way along to make a very strong bond there. Just butt it up and allow it to dry. Then moving back, to the inner edge of the wing, again align it forward, front, back and where it needs there. Now the reason you're aligning it one direction or the other is that so that all the profiles are in the same direction and when you come to put the main wing spar in all of the slots will be aligned in the same area and to where it meets the fuselage. There are a total of 20 wing profiles that come with the kit. You can include as many as you need, up to 10 in each wing. Um, obviously the more you add, the more weight I have, but the better it'll look as a static model. Um, I prefer to use the guide for spacing. It also helps with getting the 90 degree angles. So place that there, butt it up against the first. Slide your profile in align towards the front, glue on the front, the rear, just double check if necessary, because any twists here will carry on throughout the build. There you go, place that like that. front, back, front, back. At this point here you can also glue to the aileron. But if you want to make these ailerons movable at a later date, you can trim the profiles away here at an angle to allow movement and then fit a small paper or plastic hinge into the mix. And same on all wing profiles overhanging that aileron. You 
will have spare wing profiles left over after this. You can save them for repairs or if you're building another kit at some point. When you move on to building the second wing, lay all of the parts out next to this wing as a mirror image. So build the wing up as a mirror image to the profile here, lay it all out flat like so. That way you can guarantee that you are building a mirror image and not building two left wings which will mean you have to strip it down and rebuild it later and that your wing profile is on the right side. You can also compare the spacing for the wing profiles by setting it up as a mirror image so when you do view them in, view them in directly opposite again using your guide just to make sure that they are at 90 degrees all the way along. With both wing sections complete and mirrored, begin to slot them to the fuselage with the front slot going into the front of the wing profile there and the rear slot following in there. Slide them all the way in until they butt up. Push the inside of the wing down so that the wing plane comes into contact with the extended tab of that former and flush with the inner fuselage there. Once you're happy with the fit of it, glue starting with the wing former tab here. Now make sure this is a very strong joint because this will take the wing's weight. Glue all the way down here the inside of the former, making sure that it is butted up very tightly and then turning over glue the inner tab here to the cross section like so and on the inside of the wing like so let that dry completely before doing exactly the same thing with the other wing once it's glued solidly, slot in the other side of the wing, press it down exactly the same. You'll see a small gap between the two wings, which is fine. Glue all the same places over again. And wing former. Again, turning it over, making sure to glue to the fuselage cross section and along the inside at the top of the cockpit. And you'll see that gives the wings the right angle which you will need. Now we'll add some strengthening once that has dried. To complete the wings you will need the long wing strainers 13A and B. These slot very simply into the top of each of the profiles and butt up against the inside of the fuselage. Now begin by butting it up to the fuselage there and gluing it to the very top edge. Allow that to glue thoroughly. Get it in place, sitting in top of all of the profiles, then moving along, just push it down flush and dab a little bit of glue on it there and further along to get a nice finish. Now, you can replace this with either a bamboo rod or a little bit of carbon on the meter rod. That will give the wing a little bit extra strength. There, supporting it. When you come to the last wing profile, you're going to want to trim just here. Save this small part here because we're going to use some of the offcuts to fill in the cross fuselage sections and the nose detail once we fit in the motor. Once the wing stringers are glued and solid in place, trim the outer edge just on the far side of the wing profile save any longer pieces to help fill in with 
the details on the fuselage. Careful not to cut yourself with these. Can be fairly delicate. Now, to reinforce the top of the cockpit, you will need part 14A, which is this shape that slots into these two davits just here, slightly backwards of the wing spar. And will fit in like so. Glue where the tabs pass through the fuselage. Moving on to part. 15A which is the top of the wings and the top of the cockpit area. You can leave this out if you want to see some of the detail inside. Um, if you are going to fit it, it adds a lot of strength to the wings. Score along the lines, cut out in the top very carefully making sure not to go through. All of these guidelines here. This will help you to bend it slightly over the top of the wing. Taking the model, you want to align it across the top of the wing like so, bending back slowly between the two spars. Now, as you can see, the front there will align to the front edge of the wing. Begin by gluing that solidly to that front wing area there. Once that's dry, glue where it meets the trailing edge of the wing here and also on the sides where it connects like so and that will give the strength required to your wing area. Part 16A completes the nose assembly and fits like so either over the front or on the inside of the nose. Where is entirely up to you. Um, you can exclude the part if you're not going to fit the propeller kit. I'm going to fit it on the inside there, flush down to the cross section, glue it in place along the top and along the bottom. Then looking into the rubber motor, I'm going to decide where I want to mount the rubber motor. I'm going to put my rubber motor directly behind the last cross section of the fuselage. For that, I'm going to need one of the matchsticks, which I'm going to measure. Then trim, so it's just slightly smaller than the inside of the fuselage wall. Like so. loop the rubber band over the matchstick and slot it over the top of that part there and fall further through the fuselage until the matchstick is sitting like so behind there. Now touch of glue, hold the matchstick in place, careful not to get the glue on the rubber band. Allow the rubber band to pull through until you can see it exposed from the bottom. Now the cotter pin provided in the kit is going to slot over the rubber band at the stage, part it slightly and pull it down. And you need to go above the little motor mount there, like so, and squeezing the two ends together through the nose lace cell here, holding it now tightly. Take the little six millimeter bead, slot it over both ends of the cotter pin, pulling it tight, and then the 
propeller itself will go over both ends. Make sure that the notched end is outwards. Hold it from the inside. Pull it down firmly through. And then bend over both arms so that it will catch the propeller as it spins. Now, as you can see, the propeller will sit inside. You can align it on the matchstick towards the center. And that will give you the required tonnage while still remaining free throughout the fuselage. If you want, you can trim the ends of these back slightly using a pair of pliers or cutters. And that is your basic rubber powered setup for this machine. The other matchsticks provided in the kit then form onto the nose cone here. You should slot into these parts there. Glue back and front flashed in place. One. Two. And. Three. Which will give the arched nose when you cover it, you can always sand the edges off if you want it very smooth, like so. For the rear parts of the fuselage, you want to use the remaining matchsticks, trim them to fit across into the tabs here, and then just glue them in place on both ends. This is an opportunity for you to adjust the taper of the fuselage slightly allow each piece to dry in place properly before moving on. There is one in the top, two in the bottom of the fuselage. Right. So, once they're in place, you can then trim them flush on the side of the fuselage. And if you wanted to, sand them back. Same with the rear part. Yeah. Like so. And then just trim away. Now, moving on to complete the tail surfaces, we have the control surfaces. There are two totally different options for this, depending on the final look you're going for. Parts 18, A, B, and C. B and C being the flaps, and A being the vertical rudder. In exactly the same way, parts 19, A, B, and C form the same parts. Now the 19 parts are larger and give it a more old school controllable effect. In this case I'm going to go with parts 19 and fit them now. You can of course fit them with small paper hinges. However I'm going to simply glue them in place as it's going to be a straight model. Uh, I'm going to start with part 19A which is the rudder gluing along the surface it's going to glue to and then just holding it in place where I actually want it. You can see this is quite a large rudder, it gives it a lot of surface area and it gives it that classic 1960s look. Now once I'm happy with that and it's settled, I'm going to move on to the tail flaps like so. You can angle these if you want give it a different appearance or a different light characteristic. Glue along the connecting edge and along the outside of the edge 
and then put this slot into place. I'm going to angle them slightly upwards, like so. With the tail rudder and flaps in place, check that they are all securely fixed before moving on. Turning the machine upside down, we have another optional part, which is part 17A, a cover for the bottom of the fuselage. Now this adds a great deal of strength, but also extra weight. Um, you can place this wherever you like. I prefer to fit it just here on the rear of there, gluing it in place first. Just to make that another solid bond. And once you're happy with it, curve it and press it slowly inwards. glue wherever it comes into contact with the side of the fuselage which will give extra strength all the way along. Because that is a bent piece of wood you have to let it dry thoroughly. The next step is to fit the landing gear holders which are parts 21 A and B. These can be placed anywhere you like along the fuselage under the wing section here. I like to put them, place them fairly far forward like so. Um, make sure that there is some wood underneath them and that they are fairly straight. Like so. Then screw them along the inner When you put on the opposing number 21B, hold the machine upside down so that you can align it correctly and just compare side against side until you're sure they're in the same place. And glue the same way. Now, to begin assembling the fuselage you will need parts 20A, 20B and the cross section of the undercarriage 22A. These slot through the small holes on the bottom of the two uprights like so and with the machine upside down, slot the top end of the triangle into the receivers on the undercarriage mount and just eyeball it flat. Make sure that they are settled either to the front or the rear of those receivers, like so. Align it by eye, like vertical. And glue them in place. Just make sure that they're angled in the same way and not lopsided. And then you can glue the bottom of the landing triangle to part 22 of the support. It should sit flat and flush. glue any joints a little extra to make this a particularly strong section. To complete the wooden part of the model you will need the two foam and plastic wheels included in the kit. They should slot over the tabs on the axle housing and press carefully against each other and then fit firmly in place. The only remaining parts now are the exhaust profiles, the manifold part 23A and the exhaust itself 24A. Now how you fit this is entirely up to you. You can put the manifold on one side like so and then glue the exhaust coming off of it or you can put the exhaust on the other side. You can let down flat along the fuselage 
back to the manifold, have it stuck up proud. One of these parts of the kits is entirely optional. If you are covering it, I recommend you put this on at a later date. I'm not covering this particular one, so I'm going to glue it here over the top of that tab hole to disguise it, making sure that it's straight. And I'm going to glue the exhaust pipe to the manifold, standing proud and backwards along the side of the fuselage. Just like so. And that is your completed Skyhopper. Thank you very much.